Okay, let's dive into something uh, truly astounding today. Just try and wrap your head around this. Yeah. What if our entire map of the cosmos, our address, just got a massive shakeup? It's pretty mind-bending idea. Right, because there's new science suggesting something incredible. Earth, the Milky Way, our whole galactic neighborhood. Yeah. We might actually be living inside a giant cosmic void. Mm-hmm. When I first heard that, I mean, the scale just immediately jumps out. This isn't some small, empty patch, is it? No, definitely not small. The scale is, well, it's difficult to grasp, honestly. We're talking about a region spanning, get this, two billion light years across. Two billion light years, wow. And it's not perfectly empty, that's important. It's just low density. It's got about 20% less matter, less stuff. Yeah. Than the cosmic average. Okay, so significantly less dense. Mm. And that lack of density, that lack of gravitational pull locally, that must have consequences, right? Huge consequences. Yeah. And this isn't just some obscure paper buried in a journal, is it? I saw that post on X uh, at For All Curious from August 1st with those amazing images, the sort of starry sphere pictures. That really got people talking. It absolutely did. Those visuals help make it tangible. And that less dense aspect you mentioned, that's absolutely crucial because this finding, our location in this void, it might just be the missing piece to solve one of the biggest puzzles in cosmology today. We call it the Hubble tension. The Hubble tension. Yeah. Right. I've heard about this. It's basically two different, very precise measurements of how fast the universe is expanding that don't agree. Exactly. It's a major discrepancy. Sure. On one side, you've got measurements from the cosmic microwave background, the CMB. That's like the universe's oldest light left over from the Big Bang. The afterglow. Precisely. And the CMB data suggests the universe is expanding at about 67 kilometers per second for every megaparsec of distance. Okay, 67. And a megaparsec, just to remind you, is enormous, like yeah. 3.26 million light years, a cosmic measuring stick. A very big one, yes. But then here's the tension. You look at local measurements, things like exploding stars, supernovae, and how nearby galaxies are moving. Things closer to us, relatively speaking. Right. And those measurements give a faster expansion rate, well, like 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec. 74 versus 67, that's not a small difference when you're talking about the whole universe. How can both be right? Well, they probably can't both be right in the way we've been interpreting them. And that's where our void comes in. This idea, the local void effect, suggests something quite elegant, actually. Okay, I'm listening. The idea is, if we're in this big, under-dense region, this void, then the gravitational pull from the denser areas outside the void, all the galaxies and structures surrounding us... They'd be pulling on us, pulling on the Milky Way and our neighbors. <laughs> exactly. Pulling us towards them. That extra gravitational tug could be subtly accelerating our local group of galaxies. Ah, so it would look like the local universe is expanding faster from our perspective because we're being pulled outwards faster than average? That's the hypothesis. Yeah. Our local measurements might be, in a sense, contaminated or skewed by this local gravitational effect caused by the void. Right. It could explain the discrepancy. Okay, that's a really neat potential explanation. But if that's true, the implications are massive, right? What does it do to things like dark energy? Oh, it could completely change the game. How drastically? Like, are we talking minor tweaks or a fundamental rewrite? Potentially fundamental. If the local void effect holds up, it's not just, you know, adjusting a few numbers. It could force us to seriously reevaluate dark energy. Maybe we don't need as much of it, or maybe its properties are different than we thought. It could even mean shaking the foundations of the standard cosmological model itself. Wow. So this isn't just about finding our address. It's about questioning the very physics driving the universe's expansion. It's a potential paradigm shift. It forces us to confront assumptions we've held for quite some time. Okay, so a huge scientific puzzle, potentially finding a solution. But here's where it gets even more, I don't know, unexpected. This cutting-edge discovery. It seems to echo something ancient. It really does. While astronomers are mapping these voids with incredible tech now, remarkably similar ideas about the universe's structure appear in some very old traditions. It's truly wild. You take something like the Hindu Bhagavata Purana, right? A text that's thousands of years old. A cornerstone of Hindu cosmology. And it describes the universe, or maybe multiverse, as these brahmandas, cosmic eggs or bubbles. That's right. Each brahmanda is envisioned as a self-contained universe floating in a larger reality 
sometimes depicted with a deity Vishnu overseeing them. And when you see those modern simulation images, the ones from that X post, showing galaxy filaments surrounding these vast bubble-like voids. The visual parallel is striking. It really is. You can't help but see a resonance between those ancient cosmic eggs and our modern galaxy-filled bubbles. It's fascinating. It shows how different ways of knowing empirical science and, let's say, spiritual or mythological insight have grappled with similar grand cosmic structures. Different methods, different goals, but similar shapes emerge. Which perfectly sets up what we want to do in this deep dive. We're going to explore exactly this convergence, how these very modern astronomical findings like us being in this huge void sit alongside these ancient ways of picturing the cosmos. Mm -hmm. The aim is to see what happens when you bring them together, not to equate them necessarily, but to see how blending empirical data with these rich cultural narratives might actually deepen our perspective on the universe. Can looking at both give us a richer understanding than just sticking to one lane? That's the hope, to enrich our cosmic view. So we're inviting you, listening right now, to join us on this exploration. And the big question we'll keep coming back to is this. Are we genuinely seeing ancient wisdom being sort of rediscovered through science? Or perhaps are we just seeing patterns because we're looking for them? Projecting our modern understanding onto these old complex stories. And ultimately, what does either possibility tell us about our own place in this vast, structured, and maybe void-filled cosmos? Let's find out. Okay, we have covered a lot of ground. Let's just take a moment to recap the main threads. We established that cosmic voids are real. They're not science fiction. They are these huge, emptier-than-average regions sitting between the great walls and filaments of galaxies that make up the large-scale structure of the universe. Absolutely. And we know they're real thanks to enormous mapping projects, redshift surveys that plot millions of galaxies, and things like the Cosmic Flows 2 catalog, which measures the actual motions of galaxies near us. The data confirms this foamy, web-like structure with voids in between. And crucially, the idea that our Milky Way galaxy happens to reside within one of these voids, the KBC void is often mentioned. Mm, the KBC void, yes. That this specific location gives us a really plausible way to resolve that nagging Hubble tension. The difference between the 67 and 74 kilometers MPC expansion rates. It provides a physical mechanism that outward pull from surrounding denser regions that could explain why our local measurements seem high, potentially requiring us to adjust our theories about dark energy or even the standard model itself. Then we shifted gears, looking at that unexpected parallel with ancient Hindu cosmology, the idea of barandas, those cosmic bubbles or eggs. Right, offering this incredibly rich, layered vision of multiple universes, cyclical time, and the role of consciousness a very different flavor of cosmology compared to the standard scientific model. And bringing those together, that's the really interesting part, isn't it? Bridging these perspectives. Exactly. That's the so what of this whole discussion. We see this fascinating alignment, visually at least, between the modern maps of voids and filaments and that ancient bubble-like imagery. But it's crucial to be clear here, right? We're not saying the Bhagavata Purana was modern astronomy. Absolutely not. Scientific cosmology demands empirical evidence, Testable predictions, mathematical models, mythological narratives operate differently. They convey cultural values, philosophical ideas, spiritual truths. They aren't trying to measure the Hubble constant. But the convergence itself is suggestive. It hints at potential new avenues, maybe collaborations we wouldn't normally think of. Imagine astronomers working alongside historians of religion or philosophers. Understanding how humanity has thought about cosmic structure across millennia could spark new scientific questions, or at least provide a richer context for our current discoveries. It might challenge assumptions on both sides. It promotes a kind of intellectual humility, maybe. Recognizing the different systems of knowledge can offer valuable perspectives. Precisely. Instead of keeping science and, say, humanities or cultural studies in separate boxes, embracing these diverse viewpoints can lead to a more complete, more robust understanding, and frankly, a more awe-inspiring one. Which leaves us, and you, with some pretty deep thoughts to chew on. If our universe is structured like this, voids and filaments, maybe echoing ancient ideas of bubbles, what does that imply about its fundamental nature? Is it finite, infinite? Are there other bubbles, other universes? These questions push beyond pure physics into philosophy. And then there's the human element. Huh. What does it feel like to know you live in a vast cosmic void? Does it make us feel isolated or perhaps uniquely situated? How does this knowledge impact our sense of self, our place in the grand scheme? 
It's a profound recalibration of our cosmic address. So as we wrap up this deep dive, the question we want to leave with you is this. How does this dialogue, this conversation between cutting edge science and ancient narratives, challenge your own picture of reality? And looking forward, what cosmic mysteries, perhaps sparked by this discussion, are you now most curious to see unraveled?